Today we are going to talk about creatine monohydrate. One of our favorite nutritional supplements that we'd like to recommend on our Belly Proof Fat Loss Program. Ready? Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> Today, we're gonna to talk about some of the benefits and the things to be aware of when it comes to creatine monohydrate. Creatine, for Z muscle and Z fat. Creatine is probably one of the most well-researched supplements to ever hit the market. The main benefit of creatine during weight loss is an impressive increase in training performance, mainly an increase in power output, which is how well you utilize your type 2B muscle fibers the same muscle fibers that are used for lipolysis or fat breaking, which we teach in the YouTube series. To be more exact, it's up to 26% improvement in power output and some general improvements across the board. For example, up to 45% increase in the amount of weight used for some primary lifts. What else? Measurable improvements in neural drive, more anaerobic performance, more testosterone and free testosterone. It creates a super hydrated state that helps performance and recovery. It even helps with myonuclear accretion, the most important type of hypertrophy for building long-term muscle, which we cover in our full series. Oh yeah, and it's widely available around the world. It's really cheap and safe to use. So it's cheap, safe, and very effective at getting you a serious boost out of training. That makes it a very easy recommendation for anyone training for fat loss, muscle building, or anything else. Especially with our systems, which are designed to take advantage of those mechanisms, creatine helps boost. There are a few things to understand about creatine which are important, starting with saturation levels. You see, all those great benefits of creatine are only true once creatine is fully saturated in the body. Simply taking creatine before your next workout isn't going to do much. This means we want to load creatine, or in other words, increase the levels of creatine in the body so that the body gets saturated with it. You can take 25 grams daily for one week. You can take 10 grams every day for two weeks. Or five grams, the standard dosage every day for three weeks. We generally recommend you load creatine for two to three weeks before you start our program, or any fitness program for that matter. You can do it over five days to a week if you have no time, but it is better to do it gradually, and here's why. Creatine attracts a lot of water, and that's how you keep your muscles super hydrated. Before you get into your muscles, it sits in your digestive tract first, shortly after you consume it for a little while attracting water there. This is known as the creatine bloat. And if you take too much too fast, you're gonna feel bloated. Another lesser known thing is to do with your body's production of growth hormone, or gromona. Remember gromona? Representing your body's natural production of growth hormone, well, this is key to fat loss. However, during loading, you can expect growth hormone to be suppressed by up to 35% which is really not great for fat loss. For as long as creatine is saturated, there is still a small reduction in growth hormone, about 5% or so, but there's also an increase in growth hormone during rest, which sort of balances it out. Growth hormone is less to do with muscle building and a lot more to do with fat loss, specifically fat breaking, which we focus heavily on in our full Belly Proof program. This is why it's a good idea to get creatine fully saturated and loaded before any major efforts are made to lose fat. That way, growth hormone, or Gromona, can do what she's supposed to do, and you can reap the benefits. How to take creatine. We recommend that you load it at 10 grams for two weeks, or five grams for three weeks. And once loaded, we recommend you take between three and five grams every day, up to eight grams if you have much more muscles than average. You can take it any time during the day, but ideally not too late in the evening because it might keep you up. Also, when it comes to creatine, take it with a pinch of salt, literally. 
A little bit of salt when you take your creatine can help the creatine move around your body faster, which will reduce the risk of you bloating. Every now and then we get asked about creatine HCL and whether it would be better to take this more advanced form. The answer that applies to all types of creatine, including the question of creatine HCL versus monohydrate, is that we simply don't know. It might be good, it might not. Creatine monohydrate has decades of research on it, whereas creatine HCL does not. In theory, this would be great. In practice, we don't know how slow or fast or effective it will be in terms of getting it saturated in your body. Our recommendation is to stay with the monohydrate form. Nowadays, it's not only cheaper, but it's fairly flavorless too. Creatine and water retention. Creatine pulls a lot of water into your muscles. On average, between an extra two and four kg once it's fully loaded. Water, some of it sits inside of the cells, intracellular and some of it outside of the cells, extracellular. As a rule, the body tries to maintain a balance between the two. So, if you increase the water content of a muscle cell, you should experience more water around the cell as well. This is completely normal, but it can be a bit of a problem if you're just finishing a weight loss program. After all, water masks definition. And if you go to all this trouble to lose body fat, you want to see yourself in high definition, muscle definition. That means not weighing an extra few kilos on the scale and not having an extra layer of water above your abs masking that definition. The good news is that you can lose most of that water retention if you stop creating for 10 days. You will even lose a bit more water retention in the few days after that. We definitely want to take advantage of creatine as it's a significant enough boost to justify taking it. We aim, where possible, to load creatine before starting do the program and lose all that stubborn belly fat. And then, 10 days before the end, we drop creatine and the added water retention to help reveal the results we've worked so hard for. Lastly, creatine hair loss is a topic that sometimes gets asked about. Well, does creatine cause hair loss? Well, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah. Let's be clear, it doesn't seem creatine directly increases hair loss, but it does increase your strength and power output. And with more resistance training, we produce more androgens, like free testosterone. In general, this is great. I mean, who doesn't want to train hard and benefit from higher free testosterone as a result? It's almost nothing but benefit, almost. With higher levels of free testosterone, you also get higher levels of dehydrate testosterone, or DHT. And depending on your genetics, your hair may be more susceptible to DHT damage. Everyone has it to a degree, and it can be a result of scalp tension, which can create microinflammations on the scalp. And it's not something you can easily control either. The bottom line is that DHT weakens the hair follicle, causing it to miniaturize and eventually die. It's a process we call hair loss. And if you have more testosterone in your body, you will also have more DHT, potentially causing more hair loss if male pattern baldness is something that runs in your family. It's important to say creatine isn't directly at fault here. After all, if you eat healthy, do some exercise, reduce stress and get some sun and some vitamin D, all of these will increase free testosterone and therefore will also increase DHT. What sometimes happens is that many people suffer low levels of testosterone to start with. That could be due to lack of sun exposure, lack of training or just an unhealthy lifestyle. There can be many reasons for that. People may have low testosterone but have a lot of hair and not know any different. Creatine helps you train harder, and it's that harder training and changes in lifestyle that can help bring testosterone back to optimal levels. Good levels of testosterone can create higher levels of DHT, and therefore hair loss. But creatine doesn't have much to do with it. Creatine just helps you train harder. Luckily, there are many things you can do to combat DHT around the scalp. Let's see. From oxygen therapy, reducing scalp tension, pharmaceuticals and natural supplements. And even something like 3-alpha HSD enzyme to metabolize DHT faster. Just to be clear, if you are worried about hair loss, remember, anything that makes you healthier will increase testosterone and therefore DHT levels, which can lead to hair loss. Creatine is one of those things that can increase testosterone and make you stronger and healthier. Besides that, 
We don't have any evidence to suggest it can directly cause hair loss. Do you need to take creatine monohydrate to succeed? Absolutely not. You can train and eat well and get great results without a single supplement. As we teach you in the Belly Proof program, it's not how little you eat or how hard you train. There's a lot more knowledge and practice that highlights Belly Proof as truly effective training. However, if you are already going through the effort of learning how to make things better, creatine is just a cheap, safe and super effective supplement that is almost guaranteed to enhance your training. And that makes it a very easy recommendation. Are you currently using creatine monohydrate or thinking about trying it? Let us know in the comments below how this worked for you and whether you would like us to cover any specific tips regarding sports, nutrition, supplements or anything related to fitness. And until next time, stay very proof!